Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, Classic Coco, with Let's Be Real, the podcast. And we have another dope interview, all right? We got my Ram fam in the motherfucking building. Yeah. Let them know who y'all are. Yeah, I'm Daryl Q. Slade. I'm the author of The Alarm Clock, Book of Rhymes, Amutazie, which translates in English to the science of distribution. And I'm the founder and CEO of No More Suits Publishing Company. Hey. Uh, I'm Gary Nelson. I'm the founder and owner of Project Right Track, LLC, as well as... Uh, Legacy X LLC, and I'm one four for Seymour Entertainment Group. Hey. Shout out to y'all. Appreciate y'all for popping up on Let's Be Real, the podcast. Listen, I love this whole collaboration and this whole business venture that you all are working with because it's 25 years. I, should I even go into that? Because so y'all... Y'all start on the golden path to success, so keep going. But let them know, how did y'all start this? How did you create the curriculum of the whole Project Right Track? So, uh, basically, um, Project Right Track was made from my mistakes, honestly. Mm. Um, I dropped out of high school, of course. I think everybody knows this by now. I dropped out of high school and uh, went to Job Corps. Job Corps is a government uh, agency that... You can get your trade in. You can get your high school at the same time. So I dropped out, went there, um, went there, graduated. Then I went again and graduated with my advanced brick mason. So I'm a certified brick mason as well. Mm. Um, from there, it just started, you know, life, life gone life. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to learn lessons that if somebody don't teach you, you're going to have to learn through life. So that's basically what I did. I uh, made mistakes with my credit. I made mistakes with just my, uh, just overall as a man, and I just wanted to kind of teach the people that's coming after me that's in job court right now the same mistakes. So uh, Project Right Track is basically a curriculum that covers life and financial literacy. Um, the subjects are mindset management, personal credit, personal taxes, uh, professional etiquette, retirement planning, life insurance, and uh, contracts and loans. So mm -hmm. I kind of created that into a workbook that I have here now. Mm -hmm. It's it's so many cameras in here. I just got to show all cameras. Yes. But it's basically a, a workbook that I created. Um, I actually own the copyrights of it. Um, I actually going into creating the LMS behind it. But it's like I said, it's a it's a life and uh, financial literacy book that I created for job course. But it's for anybody from the ages of 16 to 24. If you just want to learn just different terminology, um, with credit, because one thing we do know, my my mama, her credit probably shit right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My pops, I don't even know his credit, but they didn't have the um, the bandwidth to teach me about credit. They didn't, because they didn't understand it themselves. We know how the black community goes sometimes. So I kind of just wanted to put it all in one place. And also with the workbook, it just it's just like if I fall off tomorrow, if I fall off in a year, I could just go right back to this workbook mm. and just look through the workbook and get right back on track. That's why I called it Project Right Track. Yes, I love it. I love it. So I know, Slay, you are the publisher of Project Right Track. How did the whole relationship, because I know we all went to school together, but how did the whole collaboration start with you two? Um, I mean, it's a lot of history. Um, I think I first connected with Gary actually at the university. I got invited back to speak to – students at WSSU mm -hmm. and I was talking about LLCs and real estate. Yep. You know what I mean? And like G was a student, you know what I'm saying? Like just a student of the game, not just the university, but of the game. And he came up to me and he was just asking me questions and more questions and stuff like that. And we stayed connected ever since then. And then like, you know, we done did events at Wake Forest. Like, you know what I mean? We talked about the same things that he's teaching about in his book at Wake Forest, like, at Wake Forest University. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I would have applied to Wake Forest University, I wouldn't have got into uni the university. But I got admitted through G Money. He's like, yo, pull up. Let's let's talk about this yes. LLC. Let's talk about collateral. Let's talk about um, commerce. You know what I mean? And then we went to the high schools in my city, you know what I'm saying, for Scythe County. Mm -hmm. And we was talking this literature, this financial literacy. And, and this so, was before the pandemic, too. Th like, this oh, was wow. like, I was still a... Uh, sophomore in college and yeah. I, we we had we was talking that wake forest like you said we did what two high schools and we kept going but the only reason why we even stopped is because the pandemic because of COVID. yeah but we, we kept going like you know what i mean yeah. like even though that was an obstacle you know it's a book called the obstacle is the way by ryan holiday you know what i mean so how you overcome them obstacles and look at where we are now and then. so 
you know, he came to me and was like, yo, I need these books by, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, March. Mm-hmm. I'm like, say less, just send me the PDF, you feel me? Yeah. And, like, you know, he could he could admit, you know, he could give his review. He got the book in, you know, two to three, biz- two to, two to three weeks, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Not even that. It, it actually took. I know the days. It took nine days. It said that it was going to be there within two to three weeks, but it took nine days for me to, you know what I'm saying, get get the books. And they was they was crispy. Like, that's why I bought one here now, just so you could see right. his work. Yeah. Like, it was it was prompt. Everything was professional. It, we, it wasn't – it was less back and forth. Like, we didn't have to keep on talking about the situation. It was just send, send it to me and let's get to work. And, and for me, it's been year – like, uh, this, I'm trying not to get emotional, but I'm – you know, in three days, that's going to be No More Suits' fifth year anniversary. Yeah. You feel me? So, you know, just full circle, here we are back in Charlotte. No More Suits was started in Charlotte off of Ream Road. You feel me? So right. it's like, you know, being here right now, this is what I've been planning for. Mm-hmm. I wanted to create a platform for authors to, you know, feel like they somebody. And like how Gary said, he owned his receipts. He owned his copyrights. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The non-traditional route, like, you know, the, in the past, it's been like, oh, you get 10%, 25 No, it ain't none of that. You got full control over your, that's your, you know, people don't realize that books is equity too. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So you got full control over that. We just simply print. Mm-hmm. You feel me? You know, you, you put your stamp on it. You you know, you you own your copyright. I can't, I didn't write the book. You feel what I'm saying? Right. That's his literary works. And so um, I have been building this platform and like how, how Gary said with his, like it's a right track. I've been working to get on the right track since we had our first interview right. in 2018. You know, I was just a test dummy, yeah. if you will, like with the alarm clock. Yeah. And I was staging the blueprint for the next man. You know what I mean? So this is the Gary's the second published author that then came through mm. the suits. So, you know, um, and then he came with me with the, the collaboration. He was like, yo, I want it to be bigger than just, you know, we doing this. He like, he's creating a blueprint for those who come after him. You feel me? So this is like big time. I'm, I'm excited and it's, it's it's profound, you know. And like y'all, you said, is we locked in for 25 years and we did that, mm-hmm. you know, just because we just wanted to show people how serious we was. And like I was saying earlier, before the camera started rolling, it's the 50 year of hip hop, yeah. and we creating a new avenue through hip hop. You know what I mean? Like uh, some people may not rap; they may not know how to rap. Gary said he rap, but I doubt that. Shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But he rapping in the pages. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And so now we showing the next man, like, you ain't just got to go to the studio. You know, you really, like, the alarm clock was written in a note in my notes in my iPhone. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like uh, using the avenue to express yourself. And it don't just have to be educational workbooks. You can, you know. You do whatever. Kind of whatever. Magazines. Yeah. Do whatever. Articles. We publish it. All Cookbooks. We, cookbooks. You know what I'm saying? All that. How, mm. How-to manuals. Mm. You know what I mean? Like pamphlet, it, it's so much stuff. Family history books, you know what I mean? If you want to record your family history, you know, my empress, her her family did that. Like they go all the way back to like the 1700s and they pub, they didn't publish through no more suits, but it's just that idea, you feel what I'm saying? Right. So it's, it's limitless, you know, where, the, where this going to go. Yes. So it's like a, a future. Right yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's what we call sure. a, a future contract. This is what China do. Right. You know what I mean? But we Americans and we stand firm on that. We are an American publishing company right We're not going to it's not shipping over the sea it's shipping from west coast to east coast you feel what i'm saying to your front door step you feel me so it's all money in you know but it's our nation this our nationhood right. you know what i'm saying so yeah yes because i i love what both of you guys are doing for the black community and just the fact that y'all started even before covid because with your workbook listen financial literacy is what we as a people lack they're not teaching us that in school. Mm-hmm. At HBCU, we're being taught that, but, like, even kids from middle school, high school, you have to kind of dive into the right people. And sometimes it's not even tangible. Like, it's just a conversation. Right. It's nothing that you can really – you can take and take heed to the conversation, but to actually put it in a workbook and to put it somewhere – where no matter where you go in the world, as long as you have this workbook, you can always refer back to it. And and, and I kind of want to say, like, I'm not an expert whatsoever. These mm-hmm. this this workbook was really made off of the mistakes that I made as a youngin. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So all I'm going over is the basic shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to understand how many people in America don't even know what a charge off is, or even yeah. know what a what 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 a um 
a, a trade off or or anything when it comes to credit. Like people don't even know just the basic terminology, how to read a credit score, how to pull up your credit score, how to even maintain your credit score and make sure it's in good standing because you can go get a credit card any day. But if you don't understand the terminology and you don't understand what you're getting yourself into right. and then the thing is, is these banks and these credit lenders, they going to see you green because you don't understand what, mm-hmm. what you don't understand the terminology. So really my workbook goes over the terminology. I actually teach you how to fish. So I have actually actual worksheets that's going to make sure you understand what you learn. Wow. So it's not just, oh, I'm teaching it to you. It's in the workbook. Now, nah, I want you to know and understand what you learn within this workbook. And, and, and that's kind of why I created it. Like it's needed at the end that's of the day. Dope. It's like an interactive guide. It's an interactive guide. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's dope. That's dope. So I know you said the process of you started from your own mistakes. What is your main goal as far as creating the workbook and where do you see yourself in the next few years? So my, my main thing is to, uh, like I said, I created the workbook for job corps, but um, throughout all the interactions and the resources and the networking that I've been doing, people are making me see more. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So they like, you don't have to just dumb it down. Not even dumb it down. You don't have to just uh, sell your chef short to just Job Corps. But my main goal is to get it. Uh, so Job Corps has 126 centers in America. Mm-hmm. So my goal is to actually get my curriculum in every last Job Corp in America. So that, that that's one of mm-hmm. my like long-term goals. But also to, I want my own academy. Like I want my own Job Corps at the end of the day so that I can uh, the way that I'm teaching and the way that the, the way that you're going to learn from me is going to be raw, authentic. I'm going to make sure you understand what I'm saying in the most rawest way because the, the, the folks in job corps, they underdogs at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So you have to, you have to teach an underdog differently. You can't just teach them the same way as a generic person in an environment that has always been thriving. Their parents, parents was thriving. Like you got to actually teach them in a way that they going to understand because everybody don't understand uh, the, the regular way. Like, mm. like I said, in the hood, what you learning for real, you learning how to survive. You're not yeah. even learning. You can't even focus on credit. You can't even focus on life insurance. You can't even focus on retirement planning because you just trying to survive uh, at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So sure. what I'm trying to do is solve that problem to where, that's at amazing. least whenever you go through my curriculum and go through my my classes and stuff, you will at least know the terminology. You would mm-hmm. at least know how to pull up your credit score. You would at least know what the difference between the IRA and a 401k is and how you can benefit from that whenever you 50, 60. Because in the community, guess what? A lot of people ain't even thinking about 60 because they don't even know if they're going to make it to right. 60 yeah. without yeah. being in the system, without dying or without just giving up because it's, they've been struggling for that long. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So I'm just trying to solve that problem long term. And then, like I said, and, well, in Charlotte, I want my own academy mm-hmm. to teach what I want to teach because the things that's being taught in school is like they they kind of – I'm not trying to downplay school, but they kind of teaching down. you how to yeah. – they work, work for somebody else, not set up a, a legacy for yourself, you know. Yeah, I mean? they they missing the legacy part, you know what I'm saying? Of course you can go out and, and get a job. At this point, you gotta think about how many jobs hiring today after COVID. So you can go get a job, but right. and you can't pass jobs down to your kids. You can't yeah. you know what I'm saying? You gotta yeah. do something. Whether whether it's getting retirement planning through a job, at least I just want you to understand what that looks like for you coming from where you came from. Or coming from, or, or or setting it up how you want to set it up. So yeah, that that's really my my goal, man, to just solve that problem. And, and I'm not solving it by myself. I have a real good team behind me. Um, I'm also working like people don't even know that I've been working with overseas vendors, well, overseas uh, virtual assistants for like mm-hmm. five years, and they they kind of I've never seen them in my life, and they kind of helped me and guide me in a way to to create a curriculum and structure it. Also, shout out to Devin. Devin Rankin, that's my dean. Um, oh, he also, I also ran a couple things uh, by him because he's big in um, education. And also, shout out to Ashley. She was another person that I called to, to you know what I'm saying? They they in the field. They, they the ones that's in the schools teaching. So, of course, I had to get guidance from them. And, and, and that's also a lesson within that because I'm not scared to say that I don't know shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, or scared to acknowledge that 
I need guidance too. Even though I have the big idea, you still need guidance in different ways. So I'm glad I was able to link up with them too and link up with my virtual assistants because they made this process pretty easy. Yes, yes. I was going to say too um, that when Gary came to me, one of the things he told me, like he said automatic sales, and that stood out to me. He was like, these books are already sold. And so like for me, like again, like I said, I was a test dummy and like, you know, in the book industry, it's hard to get sales. And I talked to multiple people, like, you know, um, who just really don't believe in books like that. But mm-hmm. that gave me, like, reassurance. Like, you know, customers don't have to be your friends. They don't have to be your family. That's a corporate job corpse. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's the largest job, you know what I mean, hiring company in the in the country. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, um, showing people ways to, to motivate them. Like, for me, another customer is the library. You feel me? Like the the public library for, for me. So it's like showing people that like, okay, this is something I can really do. And then when it release, I'm already going to have the, the it's, already it's already purchased. Right. That's, that's kind of our, our quote that we be going by. Like before I print it, what, what people don't know and what what's so brilliant about Project Right Track is before I even printed a book, I had a hundred copies sold already. Like mm. they was already Somebody already, like, this book today that I have in my hand is already sold. Like, I can't even give this book out even if I wanted to because yeah. Job Corps already bought a hundred of them. They already, like, I, I have a contract with them to where um, at once a quarter I go out to different Job Corps and teach um, my curriculum. So no matter what, I don't give a damn what happened. Soon When, when I'm hitting Slade up, the books that Slade is printing that day, them shit's gone yeah. already before they even – Finish off the press. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's like, again, it's a bloop. It's like, and that's another thing that G Money told me. He was like, this is a blueprint. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so that's the biggest thing. Like, that that lines with my vision for No More Suits. It's like, you know, the next man can, it's not this project right track. It could be the next, like, somebody who's like, oh, I got a curriculum that's just been sitting in my in my brain. So now they can go to through this collaboration deal mm-hmm. and, also, what's in this deal is the media company. Like, I, I, if you want to speak on that, mm-hmm. like, in the services. So, it's like, it's like a fusion. It's like, all right, not only are you going to print your book, but then we talking to Coco. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, right after you release, you feel me? And and that's kind of like, again, it's the blueprint because right after I released the alarm clock, let's be real. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Right after that, you know what I mean? So, it's kind of like um, we build in on that, you know what I mean? And, yeah. And we making the... The authors feel appreciated, you know what I mean? Like, authors be getting shunned. I'm like, no, nah, like, y'all important because, like, if everybody go today, y'all book's still going to be here, you feel no me? No matter what. And, yeah. And, and it's going to be, like, think about 300, 400 years, you know what I mean? Like, the Arabian Nights was published in the 1700s, mm. but I got a copy, you know what I'm saying, in, right. my, in my library, you feel me? So it's like, that's valuable. I got books that's published in 1928, mm. signed in 1927, you feel what I'm saying? So that's value. That holds value, intrinsic value. So now we just talking about business. We talking about trust. Imagine mm-hmm. when you transfer that shit to a trust. And Having a publishing company is rocket science. No, you just got to do it. You just got to make sure that you, you know what I'm saying, understanding and using your resources like slave, me and slave and cool for going on six years now. And that's the number one person. As soon as I thought about a book, I said, oh, he's in my network. So you got to think like you got to use things around you for one. Two, you got to just do the shit. Mm-hmm. Like, this shit ain't crispy. You know what I'm saying? This shit ain't, I, I ain't out here solving world hunger. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All I'm doing is just she good. helping you understand yeah. the terminology. Yeah. Hunger for knowledge, you feel me? Yeah. 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 Hey, well, we're going to go on a quick little break and get back in the show, and we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back, we back. Let's be rid of podcast. We are with No More Suits and Project Right Track. Gary in the building, Slade in the building. What's up? Do. Hey, so y'all, let's hop right back into it. So, Project Right Track, let's get into the government contracting of things and how that is going. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm already contracted to go out uh, – to New Mexico and a couple other places to actually teach the curriculum to the students on campus. Um, it all started with me going to DC. They actually, um, like I'm considered one of the success stories of Job Corps. I want to put that in quotes because I ain't I ain't really made it yet. But 
um, with, with the things that I've done so far, um, of course, being an alumni of Winston-Salem State University, also uh, getting my master's at Tennessee State University and now getting my doctorate at oh, Trevecca, wow. uh, Trevecca Nazareth University, they kind of treating it as a success story because I've done a lot um, upon graduation. So uh, from there, I actually just thought of it. I'm like, okay, so how could my, – my, one of my number one things is a call to action after you initially meet someone, especially if you want to grow that relationship. You got to have a call to action and actually have something to offer to that person, especially if it's a high-value person, quote-unquote. Mm -hmm. So – uh, what I did was I, I understood what what was the need was because even after ten years I graduated um, job corps in 2013, mm -hmm. so even after ten years they still wasn't hitting financial literacy. So I'm like, okay, cool. Um, what can I do? Not even as an expert, but but just from my experience, how could I? You know, what I'm saying not even leverage, but well, yeah, more so leverage my own situation and how I made it out of that situation and and and. and here making what I make, um, the connections that I make. So I'm like, okay, cool. What can I do? Start looking things up, start researching. I'm like, okay, cool. Maybe I can turn this into, into a curriculum. So once I did that, I'm like, okay, reached out to the people who I was supposed to reach out to, um, put, get it formatted. Um, I also use Fiverr. That's another good gym yes. that people can use. Like Fiverr was a good help in creating this curriculum as well. Um, so I went on Fiverr, got it formatted into uh, the workbook, went to Slade, talked to him, chopped it up. And then from there, it was just like, okay, cool. Um, went went to the actual uh, Department of Labor, like, hey, I have this curriculum. What do I need to do? So um, from there, I got a contract with the Albuquerque Job Corp Center. Shout out, shout out to Carl Adams. He has been a great help during mm -hmm. this time. He was one of the first people to actually – believe in the um, curriculum and believe that this is something that he need. He actually was a job corp student himself, and now he's the center director of his own. So he's been a great help. Um, from there, he kind of gave me the guidance on actually establishing my company and making sure that I was ready to receive government contracts. So you have to, of course, LLC your joint or whatever entity you want to use if you're a nonprofit, uh, 501, 501c3, of mm -hmm. course, but, of course, I went LLC. So, I LLC that got the EIN number, got the Dun & Bradstreet number. The Dun & Bradstreet number is actually a requirement to get government contracts. So, I did Business that. Business credit. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, once I did that, they was actually able to accredit me my own contract. So, I actually had to go and apply for my own government ID number. Mm -hmm. So, that's a whole other thing. It's like the EIN number, mm -hmm. but it's strictly for getting government contracts. Mm -hmm. So, I had to go out and do that. It actually, it probably took me a month to get all of that done. Of course, everybody know I've been doing LLC since what went like far back in Winston. I've been doing LLC, so I I already understood that process. Mm -hmm. But from there, got my uh the, the the important thing was getting that government ID number. Once I got that government ID number, I had to go through the process of accountants, making sure that my accounts was in order. It was a lot, but you know what I'm saying. We got it done. And now I'm able to receive government contracts from anywhere. Yeah. But now I'm structuring my company to receive even bigger contracts for me to actually bid on government mm -hmm. or bid on job corp centers. So, uh, yeah, that was really the whole process. It, it was a lot, but, you know what I'm saying, we got it done, and, and now we're able to receive government contracts around America. That is dope. That is dope. Like what? And to learn, to enter to learn, to part to serve, and that is exactly That's what, we doing. That's <laughs> what, what we doing. What we doing for real? So with all this path and building, you have your foundation. Where do you see yourself in the next few years? So uh, we're currently going through the uh, LMS stage, which is the learning management system stage. So mm -hmm. I'm actually going to create a course online for different job corp centers to subscribe to. Um, that will kind of be an easier way to – that way I won't be traveling to every Job Corp Center to teach. Everybody can just come on one platform and learn, and learn. via virtual. Yeah. That's what the world coming to right, anyway. exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, I got to do my due diligence to make sure that uh, I LMS it correctly. And then once I LMS it, uh, I'm going to be in the process of getting my curriculum accredited. So once it's accredited, then that's when the real bad come because, you know – once, once you got something accredited by people that 
done reviewed it, done, you know what I'm saying, did their due diligence to your curriculum, then that way you can actually go get it into those 126 job corp centers. They can't deny it. It's accredited. Right. So uh, that that will be my uh, next step after the current step, which is LMS. Then from there, we just build, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and we're building towards an academy in Charlotte. So like I said, I do want an academy in Charlotte that's going to teach technology, which is the biggest thing right now. Um, AI is going to teach, uh, of yeah. course, financial literacy, but it's also going to teach graphic design. It's, right. also, it's also going to teach engineering, the things that we – actually need in a world that people don't even see how much graphic designers really making on the back end, but they really make the world go around because without a graphic designer, how are you going to get your, um, graph? Well, how are you going to get your business in front of these different people and actually catch their eye? Mm-hmm. So that graphic design is important. Um, also just overall, just having the hub for students to come to, of course, uh, and, and I'm creating it to where, their membership would be them getting A's in school. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Just just to make sure that they're doing their due diligence in the classroom too. But, yeah, that academy will probably be where I leave my legacy at. Yeah, I love it. So, listen, this is what we as a people need. So, sure. I'm definitely rooting behind you everything. Like, word of mouth, everything. Like we said, face-to-face, everything. Mm-hmm. So let them know where they can find you on all social media platforms. Stay tuned in. No more suits where they can get with you with publishing if they need it. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, for sure. So um, if you interested, we um getting ready to launch a link um, for like aspiring authors, you know, to make it real simple. You know, we're going to be asking simple questions like what's the title of your book, how many pages, et cetera. And what we're going to start doing is just like generating quotes. Mm-hmm you know, and having conversations. We also do book consultations. Mm -hmm. And then with this partnership, it could be a collaboration, like how Gary was talking about, like if you want to get into government contracting and things like that, these are like the the resources that we're going to provide. You know, of course, there's going to be fees and stuff like that involved because we want people to take their literature serious. Um, So, you know, you can generally go to nomoresusllc.com for right now to stay in the know um, about that link and things like that that we're going to launch is going to be on that that site. Um, you can follow us on our Instagram, No More Suits Pub Co. You can follow my Instagram handle, Daryl Q Slade, um, and our email is No More Suits LLC at Gmail dot com. So if you have any general inquiries and things like that, you know, get at us or whatnot. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So my uh, social media handles is Building dot A Legacy. Um, that's probably like one of my main source of contact. Uh, you can also get my number there. You can get my email there. As far as Project Right Track, we are working on that website now. Um, but generally, you could just reach out to me on email, reach out to me on phone. Uh, I stay on D and D. I want everybody to know that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do the send send loud notification. Yeah, you gotta so, call him twice, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Full time. So yeah. uh, that on LinkedIn, I'm just Gary Nelson uh, NBA, and then. From there, yeah, you could just reach out to me there. Dang. Thank you so much, you guys, Appreciate for coming you. on Appreciate Let's you. Be Real, the podcast. Both of you have great platforms that, you know, I'm rooting behind. Y'all Ram fam all day for life. So you already know, Let's Be Real, we, we backing y'all. Appreciate real. you. Appreciate you. Yay. Well, this is Let's Be Real, the podcast. No more suits. Project Right Track. Gary Nelson. You already know what it is. Classic Coco signing out. Hey. Hey.